Hi everyone, Jethro here from the Seymour team and I'm your host today. We're going to be talking about credit scores with Jerome Trail. Jerome's with us just in the other room and he'll be joining us in a second. Um, as you probably know, I'm a leader of the Seymour team in Midtown Toronto, sell a lot of real estate. And one of the things we, co we come across is people need to borrow. People need to borrow for mortgages. So what we do is we uh, send them over to a mortgage broker or a bank and get them to work on their details in terms of how they get a mortgage. One of the things they have to do is get a credit score figured out. So we're going to talk to Jerome Trail. Jerome's going to join us here. Um, here we go. And Jerome, Jerome is uh, president and CEO of the Mortgage Trail, and he's been in business for about 10 years, serving lots of Midtown homeowners. He's done thousands of mortgages, and um, he will be able to help you out, understand the credit scores, but also more importantly, get you a mortgage if you need. But today we're going to talk about credit scores. And Jerome, uh, thanks for being with us. My pleasure, Jethro. Thank you for having me. It's a dry topic, but it's very important when people want to get a mortgage. Yeah, it is. It is. It's one of those things. And you know what? When I was young, I I really tried hard to get good credit. I got a credit card. I always paid off the debt. Um, I tried to pay it early. That's some of the stuff that I read. But some people, you know, they don't realize how important it is. So so uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about that today. But first thing, you know, because you're a mortgage broker, we want to know... Um, what the mortgage rates are today. What are the best rates being offered today? Well, the best rates, if that's your focus, are definitely on the variable side. There's amazing value to be had, if you don't mind assuming that little bit of variable risk. We have a spread of over 1% between five-year fixed and five-year variable. And traditionally, when it's over a 1% spread, historically speaking, people are usually better off on the variable. Anyway, oh, yeah, the five-year fixed is still around two and a half percent, depending upon your circumstances and, and what your income looks like and what your credit looks like. And um, but but basically we're around two and a half on the five-year fixed, and we're approximately one and a half on the variable. Still seems to be at historic lows. Um, hopefully it stays that way for a little while. One of the things that I was looking at, uh, I think this week, the Bank of Canada made an announcement that they were going to potentially start um, uh, in increasing rates in 2022. What have you heard? They, they've declared that they are considering that towards the end of 2022, but they're incredibly evasive when they're asked the question. They're not committing to anything, and hence, that's why we're seeing in the short term it's it's probably a good opportunity for people to save some money if they don't mind that little bit of risk to go on the variable side. There are ways that we can manage or mitigate the risk, uh, putting them with a certain style lender, but um, that's definitely where the opportunity is today. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, well let's uh, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about uh, credit scores and how we can improve them and what, you, what how we can help people um with their with their credit scores so it's an important topic as you say a little dry but uh still pretty important if you want to get a loan oh, nice. um so what does a credit report really show us so it's important for people to understand that there are two types of credit reports available the first one is the consumer version and that's something that anyone can access for themselves with some of the very high profile providers, a big one being, for instance, Credit Karma. And you're able to access that consumer level. And what does that, what's the intention of that? It's really intended to show you, okay, what debt instruments do you have? Is anyone else using your name or identity? And what's a general score look like for you as compared to many other people in your sort of situation? When you access those reports, they're typically a much higher level. They're not as in-depth, and they're not considered to be a hard pull of your score. So that's the first style. The second style, um, it's more the industrial commercial version. We would probably refer to it as either a Beacon score or a FICO. The major providers are TransUnion and Equifax. 
you've got to be set up with them. It's not something you do lightly. Whenever someone pulls your beacon score, you actually lose three points. It costs the organization approximately $20 to pull it. And in order to be set up with them, it's a, it's a serious process. We're under audits uh, and all the time. And that reporting is highly regulated and controlled. Anyway, right. as a part of a, a best practice, it's one of the first things we do with the client. We'll let them know, listen, this is what your beacon score is. This is what is reporting. Many times we'll have to put in place a remediation plan, Jethro, to, to basically get their file ready for a successful or easy transaction. And depending upon the circumstances, that can sometimes be as, as little as 90 days, or sometimes it can take years. Okay. And uh, so, so how, does, how does that affect your boring power? How does your, your credit score really affect your boring power? Simply put, the higher the score, the better access to better mortgage products. A lender will feel more comfortable advancing you funds in a borrowing capacity. The lower your score, then you're probably going to be paying uh, higher interest rates. A lender's a little bit more hesitant about how much they want to provide, and, and they're going to go over your file with a fine tooth comb. Right. So you can actually access better mortgage rates with um, with a better credit score. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And what kind of like what would be a high credit score? A high credit. The absolute maximum beacon that you could possibly have is nine hundred. I think we've seen one of those in the last 10 years. It's just not something you see often. Um, and especially self-employed people. Self-employed people typically have a large number of revolving debt instruments that are reporting. And, um, and, and the lenders are very uh, analytical on how much they're going to advance. And that score is critical. Self-employed people, we basically need to have a 720 to access decent mortgage products. Gotcha. Okay, good yeah. to know. Good to know. Um, and if someone wanted to, you mentioned uh, Karma Credit, I think it was. Yeah. Someone wanted to access their personal credit score, I guess, on the consumer side um, yeah. without triggering any kind of um, uh, notices to be, or changing your beacon score. Um, yeah. You know, how would they do that? And, and does it will that impact your... Uh, your credit score if you do it on the personal side? It's a good question, Jethro. It's definitely a, a good practice to get into. Every once in a while, check your own credit just to make sure someone else isn't using your identity. However, the most common one uh, with Equifax, for instance, they're, they're very well known. They advertise heavily. Consumer level score that you get is actually known as your Equifax risk score. It's a different numbering system as compared to the beacon score okay but many times people will come to us and say oh yeah listen jerome i've got a 750 uh equifax score and then we'll pull their beacon and it's say 50 points off it's just because they're reporting differently and we have to explain to people look you've got the consumer version they're giving you a high level overview of what you're looking at when we pull your beacon report, it's going to show us every single debt instrument that you've ever had. And gotcha. if you're, as an example, a 50 year old person, uh, you've probably had a lot of credit over the years and they will show what's reporting, what's been negligent. And we'll explain to people, well, in fact, listen, 32 months ago, you were late on this payment. So, so those conversations are important to have, and really it just helps people understand what's going on. And hence, as I mentioned earlier, it's not uncommon for us to have to put together a credit remediation plan. How, how far back do they go and look at your credit? Or how, I guess yeah, we have a follow-up question coming up, but um, how, do we, uh, how, do, how do we change our credit score and how far back do they look? They, they will always have a minimum of seven years, but in fact, you may see some debt instruments that have been on there for 10 or 15 or 20 years. And it's critical to get certain notations off. 
If you've ever been late on a mortgage payment, it's very difficult for us to get that turned around. Um, if you have someone or a third party involved, either a collection or something registered, for instance, by the FRO, the Family Responsibility Office, those come into play. And we right. need to try and get ahead of them. So you're not surprised at the 11th hour that, holy cow, I've got a $38,000 obligation registered by FRO in 2008. And, uh, you know, that was a misunderstanding. But if it's on there, it's going to have to be addressed. Sure. And if someone actually does miss a mortgage payment and then goes to renew their mortgage with the same institution or considers a new institution, um, is that going to play into their new rate and their new ability to borrow? Um, I, I guess on a, re a renewal of say a five-year term, five-year term. A very valuable lesson. Um, revolving debt. Those are known as R reporting instruments. And what the lender is looking for are R1s, meaning you're paying your, your revolving debt payments within one month or within the agreed upon. If they see an M2, and being mortgage, and if those are on the bureau, that's a problem. Um, if there's been a miscommunication or a misunderstanding with the existing lender, then it should not be derogatory when it comes time to renew your mortgage. And oftentimes, if there is like an M2 or an M3 on there, you're going to need to reach out, speak with them, and have some dialogue and talk that through. Because it would be very difficult for us to move you to another lender if you've had some late mortgage payments. Right. Right. Well, that makes sense. Um, interesting. Interesting. Well, thanks for that insight. Uh, so do you, do you have a, I guess, I guess we talked a little bit about the history of it at all, but how are credit scores actually calculated here? Do you, uh, do you have any insights into that? Yeah. So first of all, a score, uh, future behavior on credit is, is almost always determined by your past history. And it's a, a fantastic indication of how you're going to service your debt. There are a, a number of items that they use. Uh, it's not something I talk about every day. Hence, I put a little cheat sheet over here. Uh, payment history, amount owed, uh, types of credit, any new applications that you have in, in progress, and length of credit history. Those are the five most important ones. And really, what are the takeaways? Well, there's a, a few common rules don't apply for too much credit. Always pay your bills on time. Try not to carry a monthly balance of 30% or higher. Try to never exceed 80% of your credit limit. So those last four items are, are best practices if you wanna maximize your score. And really, I've just explained to you verbally uh, a credit remediation plan when we take a look at someone's report. Yeah, cool. Um, so those scores have ranges and I, we talked a little bit about this, but where do you want to be, um, as a borrower? You want to be as high as possible, Jethro. And if you're down in the six hundreds or the low sevens, then there's probably one or two reasons on your bureau that we'll see right away. Look, you're at 90% capacity on this revolving debt. As an example, you know, you've got a $5,000 limit on your RBC credit card, and you're at $4,500, well, you should immediately bring that down to 80%, hence $4,000. On a monthly basis, you don't want to be over $1,500. So if you have the, uh, the capacity, you should be paying that down right away. Right, okay. And that kind of leads into our next question, is like, what are the top three things that will influence your credit score? Yeah, obviously being late, your uh, okay, right. utilize yeah your utilization and um, and and also your link uh, if you're brand new and this is an issue for new to Canada people and why we we typically have to use foreign or international credit reporting agencies or very unorthodox or unique styles could be as as simple as showing them a 12 month history of your bank account statements making uh, your rent payment. Right. Um, so it depends upon the circumstances, Jethro, but um, it all comes down to past performance is going to be indicative of how you're going to behave in the future. 
Sure. Okay. Well, that's pretty synergetic with the things you can uh, you can do to improve your credit score. So pay early, pay sure. off, and um, how long does it take to actually affect your credit score? Depends upon. I'll call it the trough or the the range you're in. But I can think of a, a very specific example. It was January of this year. We're dealing with uh, a couple affluent. Uh, one of the borrowers, she had had some uh, identity theft, even mm -hmm. bell, a small bill, such as a bell bill. We're talking $75 a month. She didn't even know it was existing. And that had gone unpaid for months. She was in the mid 600s. She had to make a call. We then put in place the remediation plan because we, we reported, let's say for instance, she had 10 items. She had three that were negligent. We immediately told her the actual number she had to pay down to, which she did. These clients wanted what's known as a Manulife all-in-one product, which is a, a unique product depending upon your circumstances. We were below the threshold the lender would allow in January. By April 15th, we'd hit the threshold and we were able to, to basically give them the mortgage product they were really, really wanting. Gotcha. Well, that's a good, good lesson. Um, so, uh, so, so, sorry. So tell us, what, uh, what's the biggest lesson about credit scores that you've learned that you want everybody to take away with them today? Every time your bureau is pulled, by any sort of lending institution, it costs you three points. Within the last 30 days, one of our team members had an applicant and this bureau had been pulled, I'm gonna say 60 times within oh the last 18 months. 60 times, that re represents a, a spread of 180 points they lost just by having their credit pulled and not being aware that that's what was happening. The second wow. thing is pay on time. Don't miss those due dates. Lastly, pay within a certain uh, percentage of the limit, never exceed 80%, and try and keep your monthly balance below 30%. Okay, good. Well, thanks. And um, I guess lastly, how can, how can we stay in touch with you, Jerome? Like your wealth of knowledge. It's been great talking to you uh, for the last few weeks and uh, there's going to be people out there that want to understand how to get a mortgage and get better credit. So how do we stay in touch with you? Jethro, first of all, I appreciate you having me on here. Thank you very much. Uh, we are very passionate about mortgages. We have a boutique firm. We have a team of 12 people. Uh, we're incredibly strong on the system side. Uh, we have eight, I call them originators, mortgage brokers, mortgage agents, and each one is in a mentoring situation. But if we take a look at your credit, we're going to, A, tell you exactly what your score is. B, if you need some help, we're going to get you on a plan. Our conversations are not one-off transactions. This is very much a long-term relationship that we try to build with people. Anyway, it's Jerome at TheMortgageTrail.com. You can find us online, www.TheMortgageTrail.com. Or, of course, my, my cell number is 647-523-8202. And uh, I assure you, we'll take great care of you. Well, that's great, Jerome. We appreciate your wealth of knowledge and you taking the time this morning to help educate us and, and the consumers out there on how they can affect their credit score in a positive way. Uh, I awesome. really appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Sounds great. Thanks, Jeff. Rope. Have a great day. You too. All right, guys. Well, just want to say thank you very much to Jerome. That was awesome. Um, he is a real wealth of knowledge and does help us out a lot with our clients. Um, each client is unique and has their own their own particular uh, lending needs. So uh, Jerome's a great resource for that and we utilize him a lot. I just want to say thanks for watching. If you like this content, please subscribe, like, and uh, click the link. Uh, look forward to speaking to you in a couple of weeks and have a great day.